to celebrating our food and telling stories of it. I am Sophie, your host and producer, and this is Our Food Stories, a podcast for us and by us. Episode 29. I always get excited when I get story submissions that involve having a conversation with a parent. And on this podcast, it has been mostly mothers. It is so lovely to listen to the dialogue between two family members and the words of wisdom they share with each other. In this episode, I bring you another similar story where we learn about amukeke, a dried sweet potato dish made in the Teso region of Uganda. Special guest Evelyn Tino shares a lovely conversation she has with her mother about the dish. And later on, we hear another special recollection from Bernard, who goes by Biwal online. Biwal shares what he remembers of Amukeke as a young person. I know you will enjoy this one. There is a a lady I know. Uh-huh. She writes about indigenous or traditional foods. Uh-huh. And she was inquiring to, to know the story about Amokeke, like the circumstances surrounding its origin. And like uh-huh. she, she would love to learn about it. And the origin of Amokeke originated a long time ago when our ancestors used to cultivate hip potatoes. Hmm. So always after heaping the potatoes, they would slice and some ones, some amokeke from the potatoes. They select the very good ones, mm. which can make a good amokeke, mm. nice looking amokeke. So, so, so that they will preserve that amokeke mm. for either being cooked and being eaten in the morning. Or if you are not able to cook lunch, you can even prepare that one easily. You can add some genus if you wish, if you have. Is there any particular part in Tesoland where it originated from? Ah, that one I can't tell, but so long as I grew at home in Kumi, mm. at least every homestead had to make a mokeke. And they never used to beat, beat this one, so they dry for eating as a kalo. Mm. They only used to make a mokeke. There are these ones, they heat, heat them, dry them, and then they, they ground it for kalo. Mm. Those ones, I think people started eating it later. When uh, some people became reluctant to planting uh, cassava and millet. Because normally, we used to eat only cassava and millet mix. That mm. was for kalo. So mm. amukeke was only to be boiled for tea in the morning. Mm. Could you also say that other people ha- used to have it with tea in the evening? If you want those homes which would take tea. Mm. But then if you take it in the evening, you will not be able to eat supper. Mm. Would, Unless you intend not to prepare supper. Would you say that amukeke is like a snack for the itesoids? Uh-huh. Because it was easy even when you come from the garden, when you are very hungry, you can even eat it raw. Uh, so... Like, like you people used, you, you used to pack in the saucers that that was the potato biscuit. You mm. eat it dry like that, uh, uncooked, and then it's sip tea. <laughs> so, so, so then I would tell you people, oh, let me first cook them. So they, no, 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 this is the uh, uh, biscuits from Teso. These are potato biscuits. Let us eat it like this. We enjoy it. Mm. Mm. So what's like the process of making a mukeke? And after getting the potatoes from the garden, you peel them nicely. Mm. You don't leave any dirty parts on it. And mostly you pick those ones which are straight, straight, so that it will be easy to slice them. Then after slicing them, you put them in the sunshine. Those days, you, you could dry them, leave them in the garden. You get this uh, their leaves, uh, leaves of potatoes. Eh? Mm. You do spread them, then you put them there to dry. When after they have dried completely, when they dry, they start uh, bending. Eh? You first let the leaves in the garden. 
the the potato cuttings after you dig them out you get them and spread them mm. the leaves. but these days people are bring it to home mm. either they use tundu bali mm. or they smear the ground with the cow dung then they spread them there that's after after slicing the potatoes eh hey, then you put them to dry so after, after peeling the nice potatoes eh? uh-huh and and slicing them do you first wash before drying or you after no the, because you peel them when they are nice looking mm. you don't have to put where there is a sand so after slicing then you put them to dry okay eh hey. like for how long does it have to dry to dry properly about a week or full so long sunshine. as the sunshine is there a hey, full sunshine a week okay so, then after one week you pick them then you store them and hey. and the cooking bit the cooking bit you just get water put mm-hmm. on a saucepan then you get your mukeke the size you want to cook you wash them clean you wash the the dried mukeke eh hey, you wash them clean removing any that which they must have contacted with mm. Then you put them in that water you have already put on the fire. Sprinkle some salt in it. Mm. But the water, you don't have to put little. You put what is enough, at least about to cover the amokeke you are cooking. When it has started boiling, mm. then you get your mulao and turn it over. You keep on turning them. When you see the water is reduced and they are ready, mm. then you can mash them. Okay. But some people don't mash like the acholis. Mm. They don't overcook it. Mm. They get it when they are just the, like a mukeke form. Then they eat it like that with odi. Mm. You'll just hold it a mukeke as if it is a spoon, scoop odi and eat. And it is over, pick another one, scoop with odi and eat. But for you that it is so it's you take it with tea. We first mix it, even actually they take it with the tea. We mm. first mingle it. Before mingling, you can put there some OD in it. Eh? Mm-hmm. Then you mingle it. Is there a particular... Sometimes if there is a cow ghee, ghee, local mm. ghee, mm. you even put a little in it to taste better. Ah. Oh. Eh. So do the eaters... So if also... you don't have OD, mm. you put ghee. Okay. Mm. So do the eaters so it's have a name for D or you also call it O D? For us we call it a maidol in Yalala Ah, that's that. Of course Ginast Ginat mixed with the sim sim. You said in Ates, what do you call it? I I don't think they have a special name for it. But they actually call it O D. What about the itesoids? I just know it that it is a my uh mixed with the sim sim. Which is called what in Ateso? Temaido in Yalala Kedi Kanyum. Which ah. means Ginarsi mixed with OD. Ah. Eh. Interrupting your listening for a little bit. Did you know that you can send in your food story? Yes, that's right. If listening to this podcast has inspired you to relieve some of your favorite food memories, you can send those stories and be part of our food stories. Just send an email to a kitchen in Uganda at gmail.com to get more details. This call is for Ugandans for now, but if you enjoy these stories as much as we have enjoyed bringing them to you, you can leave a testimonial or a rating on your favorite listening platforms. Now back to the story. Amukeke is uh, it's, it's it's a very lovely traditional kind of I don't want to say meal, but it's it's a lovely traditional food uh, from Teso. Uh, what happens is during the potato harvesting season, what used to happen well, it doesn't really happen too much nowadays, but the potatoes are so they they they, they have different forms of potato preservation right so first obviously there are those that you boil there and then like uh for breakfast and stuff like that then there's a kind that we call a mokaru a mokaru is where they dig 
uh, a hole in the ground, put in potatoes, then put a bit of firewood and maybe some soil, and then and then just leave it to to, to just simmer in there. We used to do it um, trans night, like you put them in at night. Normally, what happens is in the evening after you've cooked a meal, after supper, right? So the fire that is left over, you go dig a hole, put in potatoes then put uh, that ash and whatever is left from the fireplace there, then you cover with soil, and then you go to bed. In the morning when you wake up, it's very, very delicious. So that's called a mokaro. Or um, you can make a mangor. A mangor is now a mixture of sweet potatoes, and um, there's a special kind of peas uh, that they mix it with, they mingle it, and it's like a proper meal. You know, it's normally for breakfast. Or you can grind um, into flour. You can grind the potatoes into flour. Um, the flour from which you can make what we call a tap. A tap and a chok. A tap and a chok means kalo of potatoes, basically, right? Uh, so that 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 is normally mixed with uh, with with let's say uh, ground cassava or you know ground millet or sorghum or whatever to make combination. Uh, meals, so to say. The other way to do the potatoes now is is the one that is a mukeke, which is the longer term preservation. So what happens is after the, the sweet potatoes have been harvested, they bring them to the to the compound, and then they peel, right? Peel them, peel them, and then cut them into uh, long slices, right? Long slices, the way you'd cut um, Irish potatoes into long. Uh, slices for chips, right, or fries or whatever. So you cut this into long kind of slices. But the, but but the, the way the slices are, they're very flat, and uh, they're flat, they're thin, they're long. So you cut through the potato from the top to the bottom, and then so you have so many of those slices. Then they spread them out in the compound to dry. Normally, what 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 happens up country is when they are spread out to dry. Um, if it's if it's if it's a dry season, uh, they'll be put out to dry. Then in the night, in the evening, they are they are taken to Edula. Edula is a granary. These days there are no more granaries, but there used to be granaries. In the evening, when the goats have been brought back from from the bushes and whatever the goats and the cows and they've all been put in, then you go and get the potatoes that you that you sliced amukeke and put them into the granaries. And then in the morning you do the same routine. So you do it for like a week until they're really, really properly dry, yeah? So then, now when they're dry, you keep them in the granary for as long as even six months. And what you do is, now, th- those, those, the amokeke that you've kept now in the granary, you can now bring it out and use it for different things. You can use it for breakfast. When you boil, you put it in the saucepan, put water, boil it, and then you, ca- you can mingle, right? You can mingle it into some kind of posho-like thing, and that can be so freaking delicious. Um, or you can just cook them the way they are, you know, put water and just let them boil, and they are so delicious. That is what amukeke is, and it's a very traditional meal for Iteso, uh, especially because its it, its longevity is 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 never in question. It can it's very, it can be preserved for as long as you possibly want. Um, over six months, even a year, you know, and, and what used to happen those days was they would keep it for Akamu. Akamu is like a dry season, a dry season when there is no more, like there's not a lot of food, and then you just have it for breakfast, or you can have it for lunch, or for dinner, or whatever, with water. <laughs> if, you know, if there, if there are days where there, there's no sauce or whatever, you can have it. It's a very multi-purpose meal. Because because we used to travel up country for Christmas and Easter and all these big big holidays, that was usually when we would interface with Amukeke from the from the harvesting point of view, yeah, and then we'd take back some back home uh, to Kla. My earliest memory might might have been I don't know early nineties I think I was still a small boy then. Um, and it was it 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 very it, it immediately was my favorite dish, you know, because it was so sweet, it was so easy to prepare, it was always available, it didn't need you to do anything, it was just it was just ever ready, you know, and and and, and my grandma loved it so much, well, mostly because it was easy for her to fix it for us and would have it um, with water or milk or tea, like you know, black tea and. It evokes memories of sitting 
sitting in a compound and just just enjoying it with family while bantering each other and saying all these things and listening to stories from the old man and and i mean my granddad god rest his soul and my grandmom god rest her soul and everybody else and it was very lovely and then the other thing is i remember it as the meal that we used to have um whenever we would go to the gardens in early morning 6 a.m because when we go to the to, to the village for holidays we would spend you know three weeks or a month and during that period people would go to the gardens and stuff so sometimes out of curiosity you know sometimes you also go like at 5 a.m or 5 30 6 a.m then when you come back at 9 or 10 a.m everyone is so hungry and they come back to a very nice well-prepared huge meal of amokeke and you eat it and you just feel like i don't want to eat anything else yeah it evokes those memories um a bit of nostalgia there in Sere, amokeke was for a very long time a go-to meal because it's it's a dry place right and so most of the time the food that was eaten was food that had be, that had to be stored that had to be um preserved for as long as possible and amukeke was high on that list of course there were other things like cassava you know that also used to be preserved in in, in edula a granary um things like millet you know sorghum maize yeah most of the other things were really touch and go harvest and consume or harvest and sell or you know um, harvest and butter for something else but these ones they would harvest and store and you'd find land granites you'd find things like granites like you know sweet potatoes in form of amokeke emuogo you know cassava um, emudonga which is maize um you'd find things like ikanyum which is simsim what else do i remember that used to be kept in the granary imumwa which is sorghum all those other things they used to be harvested and stored in granaries yeah so it also evokes memories of a granary nowadays there's no home not a single home has a granary to be honest when when i travel up country it, it's kind of saddening you see homes now store food in iron sheet houses in stores and stuff like that but back in the day it was granaries so the way granaries were set up was they would have a small hut uh, that is set up off the ground but it was made from cow dung and i think it was elephant grass uh there's a way they would weave it together and then with uh i think it was reeds yeah they they, they weave reeds around and then kind of plaster them with cow dung and a bit of i think elephant grass and then it dries and in there there would be a hollow kind of room so to say where now they would pour these things so once once that dries you pour these things in and then the top the top was removable the top was now the cover was removable that's you know they would just push a stick lift the roof a bit and then they'd use a basin to pour to get the um the amukeke or imumwa you know or emaido or emogo whatever the cooking techniques there's quite a number like like i like i'd mentioned earlier on there's so many ways you can prepare it and and nowadays because people are more into exploring right it's easier for you to 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 try combination things and amukeke is a very good it's a very good recipe for combination kind of trio ingredient cooking and whatnot the thing though is the one common denominator whenever you want to use amukeke is you've got to boil it right you've got to put water and boil it so what you have it with or what you mix it with would be now the difference yeah would be now what would cre- create the difference because there are times when uh, and my mom loved doing this. I don't even know why she doesn't do it anymore. But she she, she would prepare mukeke and ask and ask me what would you like to have it with. And then would there would be a plethora of things she would want me to sample it with. I have eaten mukeke with beans. I've eaten mukeke with beef. <laughs> Strange. I've eaten mukeke with pork. I've eaten mukeke with peas. I've eaten mukeke with fish. I've eaten mukeke alone. I've eaten it with greens, a ball which is gobe. I've eaten it with nakati. I've eaten it with pretty much any sauce, so to say. So for me, my, my basically my palate is is uh, it's always joyous whenever there's a mukeke involved, and uh, whichever way I eat it, I'm, I'm just really happy, you know. And now that now, unfortunately, I haven't eaten it in a, eaten it in a long time. A because not too many people now make it. People have ventured into other productive things, but then also. 
um it's now hard to come by it really really is hard to come by in my village for instance and i'll use my village as, as an example we do pass somewhere in Seri district the people who should be making their mukeke are either um, young men who are now riding border borders so no one is interested in farming or they are young women who've been married off right so you know no one is around at home and whatnot or there are still young women who are now involved in business so that means you know nobody has time to sit and 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 peel potatoes the whole morning or slice some okay and spread it out in the compound and then take it into the granary in the evening then tomorrow morning do the same thing for a whole week nobody has time for that so we don't get it anymore you know and even when we go up country people have become modernized in that back in the day we would look forward to going up country because we know we're going to come back with amukeke we're going to come back with with imumwa imaido you know um, akobokob that's a certain a certain i don't know what akobokob is in, in english now um akobokob is um th- there is a certain i don't know if it's a fruit right that uh creeps on the ground it's it's kind of like they are like eggplants ish but they are on the ground and they're harvested and then um they're cooked in so many ways but they're mostly delicious with ginat paste or simsim paste yeah I, I don't think i've seen them anywhere in the world other than in in in, in serere uh the it's 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 regarded a meal for fairly poor people right but i love it i, I love it because it's it's rare it's it's not those things you eat every day so when you get the chance to eat it the pilot is excited while we were exchanging messages about amukeke we found out that the vegetable b-wall is talking about may be similar to the one ismail shared in episode 23 called obokokwe in acholi i will leave a link to that episode for your listening pleasure another meal is amagira amagira is uh, i don't know what that is also in english but it's a kind of peas i think it's also regarded a meal for fairly poor people but i, I love it as well because i don't eat it often I can eat it like once or twice a year and even then it's when I demand my folks in the village I'm like I need this but the point I was making is things have changed because back then we'd go up country hoping to get those things and bring them this side now when we go up country they hope we are taking them things from this side right so people now want uh, you know soda and bread and uh, and all these modern things and it won't be it won't be long before they start asking for you know cornflakes and witabix and and pizza and all these things because like i mean people are becoming modern right so the people who used to who were native 10 15 years ago who are very native in their in their test in their exposure are now slightly traveled they've gone you know a few districts away they can now see what other people are eating they want to try new things so they they end up kind of abandoning some of their older things which is a bit painful but also hypocritical of me because i've traveled so far away from serere to come to kampala and now i'm kind of berating people who travel just a few miles away from Zere. but yeah so th- there's been a change in that regard and chances are you will not get amukeke in as many places as you would have 10 or 15 years ago but it's 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 it would be a very wonderful thing very very glorious thing and now that i start this conversation i feel like i suddenly want it damn it thank you biol and evelyn for this great recollection of amukeke and for inspiring us to try it and just like how biol felt like having the dish at the end it is how I feel at the end of every story in this podcast. Let us know if you feel the same way by leaving a comment or a review on this episode. Thank you, Evelyn, for bringing mom, Mrs. Mary Beatrice Tino, to share this lovely story with us. If you're looking for someone to capture your memories, Evelyn is the person to reach out to. Evelyn has a photography business called Nze Eve Photography. At Nzei Photography, they capture moments as they happen and they offer photography and videography services for corporate events like conferences and seminars, retreats and talks, corporate portraits and headshots, cityscapes, landscapes and wildlife and they also have prints for sale and they also do product photoshoots. The next time you're looking for someone to capture an event, 
reach out to the Eve Photography to make magic happen. You can find the Eve Photography on Twitter, on Instagram, and Facebook under the name at the underscore Eve. You can also call on this number 774 573 797. Bwall is a storyteller whose blog, if I'm not mistaken, has been around for over a decade. He is one of the first bloggers whose work I got a chance to read while I was starting my own. I will leave a link to his website in the episode notes so that you can check out his work. Remember, if you have a delicious food story that is very dear to your heart and you would like to share it on this podcast, you can reach out to me via email at akitcheninuganda at gmail.com or on Instagram at akitcheninuganda. Don't forget to share the podcast with other listeners, to leave a review or a rating, and to comment on your favorite stories wherever you listen. See you in the next episode.